call the July 27th Architecture Review Board meeting to order. Um, you've already run through the roll call. I can do that if you'd like. I guess to be official, if you wouldn't mind doing that again now that we're yep. adjourned or in session. Sounds good. Joe Clark? Here. Marcus? Here. Jerry Jones? Richard? Here. Pam? Robert? Here. And Charlie? Sounds like we have a quorum with four. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, if I could ask everyone to please stand in their respective locations uh, and face the flag or east for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Someday we'll get that in sync. Right. <laughs> I think the trick is not to listen to the, the other folks. <laughs> yeah. um, item 1.3, any potential conflicts of interest that need to be identified today? Hearing none, I'll move to item 2.1, approval of the minutes from the July 13th meeting. Move to approve, Marcus Savalia. Thank you, Marcus. Do we have a second? Yeah, you're already good. You just turned it off. Second. Second. Yeah. Was that uh, Richard seconding? Yep. Yep, Richard seconding. Perfect. You're All right, second. thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Whenever you want to talk. Oh, he turned it off on me. Never mind. Hearing no additional discussion items, uh, Steve, if you could call the roll for the votes. Sure. Joe? Aye. Marcus? Aye. Richard? Aye. And Robert? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that brings us to item 3.1, the discussion and possible action on the 1402 Union Avenue. Chad, if you could take the podium and tell us what is uh, being discussed and proposed, please. So thank you, Chair. This is Chad, the Planning Director, and I'm here to talk about the property at 1402 Union Avenue. So on the packet, those that are in tenants have a drawing, but in the uh, actual item, there's a side elevation of this building. This building is on the corner of 14th and Union. If you've driven down Union Avenue, uh, you've seen this building. It's the side of the brick. Cream City brick is falling off at the top of the uh, building. Um, there's been Joe Schmidt and Son barricades around it for probably a good six to eight months. Um, so the city building inspector wrote this property up. We were going to move forward with a raise order. And uh, after touring the inside of the building, decided that raising it wasn't the best option because we would have been just stuck with a uh, vacant lot on a prime intersection that we would have had to mow the grass on for the next five years. So the idea came up of um, it was going into foreclosure at the time, so we left the building go into foreclosure and the city negotiated a deal in lieu of the building code uh, citations on the property to um, have them deeded over to the city for a dollar from the bank. So Wisconsin Bank and Trust uh, turned the building over to the city a um, couple weeks ago. And so now we're in the process. We've got a couple interested parties um, and we would like to get some thoughts on how to handle this uh, brick in a cost effective manner um, versus re-bricking this whole side back up. So the estimates from Cautious Construction and Schmidt Construction that the lender, uh, Wisconsin Bank and Trust, obtained were almost $200,000 and the property is assessed at $90,000. So we're looking at what options are out there. Um, we've talked to the interested party um, that the city probably would be interested in uh, selling it to and they recommended taking the brick down 
um, halfway, so splitting the first and the second levels, um, and then capping it off, and then putting some type of either uh, siding or a material of um, plastic looking siding, plastic looking brick that I have in the chambers with me, so you're gonna have to base it on your friends here at the table to see what this stuff looks like. But basically it's a product that you buy at Menards. Um, it would be a side, it would be a siding, but it would act like brick and, and you can get it in different colors. Um, and the idea would be, do you put something like this back up? Because from a distance it would look like it was, um, you know, it, that it wasn't the cream city, maybe you tied into the color that's on the front of the building on that far uh, southeast corner. You can see where there's a different color, like a reddish brick, and then wraps around to the front. So do you bring that around in the same kind of material on a higher up? Um, they're gonna have to do some insulating to deal with this and deal with some structural stuff, but the the owner that's interested in the property, the buyer, is saying that he believes it can be done. It's just that it's going to have to be done in a cost-effective manner. So what we're trying to understand from the committee is, number one, what would you guys accept? What's your recommendations? And if you have recommendations, are they something that's relatively inexpensive that we can keep this property on the tax roll, get some use in this building, and be able to you know, move forward with life because the rest of the building is in relatively good shape. Chad, can you clarify for us on the elevation that's on our screens now, uh, or was on our screens, exactly how much brick is needing to be removed? Is it just this elevation? And what is the extent that has to be taken? Does it go all the way to the corners uh, or Yes, we it, just go the, to the window jam? The idea, the idea was, is we thought as staff that it would make sense to, um, on that elevation, um, just behind that taller tree, there's like an exhaust fan, and someplace, you know, a foot or so above that exhaust fan to break it. So if you broke it where the floor truss maybe is between the two floors, um, took it down to that point and took it corner to corner, and maybe I... The build, the, this is the only elevation that has this problem. Um, the north and south or the front and back of the building appear to be in um, good shape. So they, you know, they may leave a course or two of brick on those corners to wrap it around and then try to just fill, to kind of mimic what you see on the front corner where the, the front uh, brick color wraps around to the east elevation. Maybe you leave the Cream City on that north uh, east corner, like a, a row or two of that uh, brick, and then just fill in the in the middle, if you will. Did that? Yeah. My my initial look at the elevation, I had thought that if we could leave everything from the window sills down as brick, uh, that would be aesthetically a nice breaking point um, but structurally if the brick needs to come down all the way to the floor level uh, then I guess we could consider that my personal preference would be to go with some sort of uh, a different siding material rather than the fake brick uh, and personal preference not to mix the real with the uh, fake brick on the same building uh, so something with a horizontal siding or a panelized siding of some sort would be my preference there. Uh, other board members, your thoughts? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lindy. Yes. Uh, it sounds to me like we're trying to... Uh... He's turned off again. You, uh, when, when the light is... Don't touch it. No. Oh. Okay. You're good. There you go. You're, you're, you're good. You're my bad. Okay. Um... It sounds to me like we're trying to design by committee. I have a suggestion that we hire an architect, namely me, at a fee of zero to do a study to find out what can actually be done and what will look reasonable and report back at the next meeting. We, we could go with that. We like the zero because we have we paid a buck for this, so we don't have much money, but we could we could work with you and come up with some concepts. I think the plan I was hoping was that we could 
um, given that the council process takes three weeks um, and we've got brick that's a ha safety hazard that's falling off of that building and you know, neighbors that are, there's a whole sheet that's ready to just fall. You can see it above that window. We were hoping to get an answer today. That's why we amended the agenda to be discussion and possible action so we can uh, include that in the offer and hopefully start the council process to sell this property sooner than later. But if it's the committee's uh, wishes, we can hold off for two weeks. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, was that Bob? It was Marcus. I've got a question. Hey, Marcus, go ahead. Thank you. Um, is, is there anything preventing us from taking down the dangerous portion of the uh, brick without um, a, a plan uh, to replace it at this point in time? Chad? There is nothing, there is nothing doing that. I, we're going to have to hire a contractor to do it. City staff won't take this on. So I don't have any money budgeted to do this. So. Um, yeah, I guess we can, you know, get somebody in there and see what they're, you know, what the problem is, is when you look at it, it's like, where do you stop? So, you know, just because that piece is, is loose, the rest of it, you can see is pulling away from the windows below and, and on the side, but we can get the real rough stuff off, I guess, as soon as we can, I'll just have to find money to pay for it. Just to chime in here, this is Bob. I agree with what Joe said. I like the idea of stopping at the sill if it structurally can do that. And I also agree with not using the fake brick, but using a siding um, for what it's worth. <laughs> so I don't know Thanks, if, Bob. I don't think we're gonna be, I, Pat Irick and I were out there and I don't think we're gonna be able to stop at the sill. It looks like they're peeling away further at the sill, I, I think there's a point in between where we're hoping to go and where the sill uh, stop is. So, you know, hopefully we can, I don't think it's gonna be at the sill though. When I look at it, it looks like that's already pulled away in some areas as well, but we would do have them, you know, disturb the minimum. Yeah, so I think there are a number of steps that we need to take on this. Uh, the first one would be the safety factor. Uh, Architecture Review Board isn't in a position to have any input on the safety of that. Um, that's something we'd have to leave to, to you, Chad, and the city to evaluate to see if something needs to be done right away or if it can be left until there's a direction and get a contractor in there to do all the work at once. Um, so if if we could defer that to the, the city powers that be to make that assessment. Um, second piece, the cost, it sounds as if uh, most folks have weighed in that some sort of siding approach would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we'll work with the city as best we can to get a, a budget approach that is still aesthetically pleasing and doesn't set horrible precedents for it. Um, but then I think we, we do need to have some sort of assessment of the existing structure there, uh, how much brick can safely be saved, or whether so much of it's deteriorated that pretty much that entire elevation would need to be addressed. Um, and I think if that's something that uh, the inspector has been able to establish and can review with Dick Lindy, uh, then I, I would love to take him up on his uh, wonderful offer of doing architectural work for no fee um, to be able to take a look at some suggestions. Otherwise, as he said, we're, we're designing by committee. Uh, a lot of arm waving and doing this remotely is really going to be difficult. Uh, so if that's something that can be done fairly soon. Uh, for the next council meeting and your schedule, Chad, is this something that if Dick's able to come up with ideas and we can review this uh, with board members uh, via email to be able to get some consensus and then leave it to staff to uh, make that approval to the council. I think that would work, Mr. Chair. What I would recommend is that um, as part of your motion, if you just so we can get it in the minutes that you're authorizing staff to work with Mr. Lindy um, and provide some estimates and that maybe option one is to preserve as much 
um, brick as you can. So, you know, the option one might be only to take it down to the windows if that's possible. And then if absolute worst has to go a little bit further than that, there's an option two and that it's documented in the minutes. That sounds perfect. Um, this one wanted to take a stab at making that motion. <laughs> I think to help you out, the motion would be to um, authorize staff to work with Dick Lindy to come up with a plan that would be shared with the committee via email, um, with option one being to uh, leave the brick intact up to the bottom of the window um, sills, and then if that's not possible, option two would be to go to the first, you know, row of bricks that are structurally sound that can stay in place. So moved. Wonderful. Thank you, Marcus. Do we have a second? Second. Marcus and Dick. Perfect. Thank you. Any further discussion? One, one, clear, clear sorry, on yes, yes. sorry, Joe, one other question is that the potential purchaser of the building um, was thinking of converting the downstairs unit, downstairs a commercial unit to a residential unit and had talked about maybe some windows in that first floor elevation on the east side. And you know, on the drawing that I gave the group, there he's got them as horizontal windows or vertical or whatever you guys call them in the architectural world. I'm of the opinion that they should kind of match the upstairs windows. Um, so the idea of in that kind of, sorry to throw this in there, but in that kind of south uh, southeast corridor, uh, basically between the bush and the corner of the, the front of the building would be to put in some uh, windows there that if they were a, if those were bedrooms they would have some daylight. So what is is the committee, you know, and we could work with Dick on some recommendations of what that might look like. But um, would you guys be against adding some additional kind of street level windows on that east elevation if this became a um, two unit apartment building? Uh, from my standpoint, I, I don't have an issue with that, but I think it's going to be difficult to save brick uh, and cut openings into it. Uh, by the time you're putting new lintels in for that, you're probably better off taking the brick all the way down to maybe a wainscot height, and then is it even worth saving at that point? Um, do you know if there's any sort of plan anticipated uh, for that residential conversion? to know where the windows should be located. Uh, we, we seem to be expanding the scope that uh, Dick volunteered to work for. I don't want it to get beyond what he's comfortable with. At this stage, I don't know that. Um, for surely underneath the two windows that are on the, on, the, on the top side, there would probably be a need to have at least two on the the bottom side and that towards the front of the building. Um, but I don't, th that would be up to, that, that would be up to them to present and come forward with at a later date. Um, I don't think f I would have Dick look at that. I think that's more structural and they can hire their own architect to do so. Could I comment on that too, Joe? Please do. Um, in order to convert that to a two family, they would have to go through a conditional use permit process. So maybe at that time when that gentleman has that more put together, if he chooses to go that direction, he would have a bit more of a floor plan. And then if he would choose to do some windows or something to that effect, he could have, you know, he could review that and come in at that time. And we could review that aspect of it then if he chooses to move forward that way. Yeah, I think we can certainly split it into a, a near-term and long-term evaluation. Uh, my, my concern with that is in setting up this first phase, uh, do we then uh, take some of the options off the table for what they can do in the future? Um, 
Whereas if we knew exactly what we were doing now, being able to evaluate it all at once would definitely be preferable, but it sounds as if that just isn't an option. Um, Dick, the only other thing I would ask of you is, is that something that as you're looking at the elevation, um, you could make some recommendations based on as that elevation is coming together with the infill of the siding, where lower level windows might architecturally be most appropriate, and then they can try to work a plan to those windows, even though uh, we wouldn't have actually approved those yet. I'd be comfortable with that, uh, Mr. Chairman. That, that would be fantastic. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm volunteering you for more work. <laughs> Not a problem. I seem to have plenty of time. Excellent. <laughs> So we have a motion and a second, and I believe we were then amending that to include the possibility of uh, residential windows on the lower floor. Are the motioner and seconder comfortable with that amendment? Yes. Sure. All right. Any further discussion needed on those points? If not, Steve, could you please call the roll for the vote? Sure. Joe? Aye. Marcus? Aye. Richard? Aye. And Robert? Aye. Sounds as if it is approved. So Chad, does that get you what you need to be able to move it forward? It does, and I thank you for this because we wanted to have it documented before we started the council selling process, and I think uh, this is a good plan moving forward to keep the building on the tax rolls and standing um, and get somebody in there that can use it. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to help. And if uh, through the development, uh, Dick and Steve, if there's additional feedback needed from the board, uh, please contact us and we'll try to help you expedite this uh, to get it so that it keeps your schedule on track. Sounds good. Uh, next meeting is looking like August 10th. Uh, do we have things on the agenda for that yet, Steve? Yes. All right, perfect. Uh, and with that, I think we are done, unless anyone has anything else. Just a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> we are adjourned. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh -huh.